Hello, welcome back to Revenger in Sports and another edition of, I don't know, cycling information for you. Um, today I want to talk about different rim depths and it's a question I get quite often, by the way. So I just thought, why not make a video about it, share my two cents on these things and you know, your, your opinion may vary, your mileage may vary, but at least you can hear what my thoughts are. So, um, you know, like every, every other video, please like and subscribe. Please find a friend to share this information with and, you know, hit that notification bell so you know when I've posted a new video. Okay, what I wanted to talk about is, you know, wheels come in so many different rim depths and when I talk about a rim depth I'm just talking about this part here so from the the edge of the tire down to where the spoke um, meets the rim so that is the rim depth now there are many different applications for wheels and in some cases there is the best wheel for that application and then there are other wheels that are pretty much a general purpose type of wheel. You could use it for just about anything. And when I say for just about anything, I'm talking about a wheel like this. This is a low profile wheel. It's only about 25 millimeters in depth. And this is the kind of wheel that you can ride anywhere. This particular brand, Head Wheels, and this particular model of wheel, it's a nice 25 wide rim here. And so it interfaces very nicely with a 25 tire, 25 millimeter tire. And this is a very, very good all purpose type of depth. You can climb with this type of wheel, which climbing wheels are typically lighter. You can in this case, I've done a lot of gravel riding on this wheel. I just changed the tire out to something else. It is very, very good in crosswinds. It's actually a very light type of wheel. One thing that a lot of people, um, it seems like the light bulb goes off in their head when I ask them, hey, why did you buy those carbon wheels? And Oftentimes they'll say, oh, well, I wanted something lighter. Well, not every time. So a lot of high quality, very high performing aluminum wheels, the carbon wheel with the little bit deeper rim depth is typically, typically going to be heavier than a high performance aluminum wheel, right? And we're talking rim right now things change significantly when we start talking about disc, um, disc brake wheels. But a shallow aluminum wheel, high performance wheel can typically be lighter than a carbon wheel. And some of you might be thinking, is that possible? And yes, it is. Because generally, if you buy a carbon wheel, except for maybe the aesthetics, you're probably trying to find a wheel that provides you with a little bit more aerodynamic advantage. Now this is a 35 rim depth. So we had 25, now we're going up to 35. And so we're just talking about, remember again, just from the bead here to here, that's 35 millimeters. And this, between this and around 40 millimeters is about as deep as I personally like to ride. A lot of times I'll do stuff with no hands, whether that be grabbing a gel or something out of my pocket or grab the phone, take a video, take a picture of my friends when we're riding, something cool, a good scenery. And I like a very shallow wheel because I just don't like to have my front end pushed around if I'm riding one-handed or no-handed. And I ride a lot in the mountains and crosswinds for me uh, are an issue with a deeper section wheel. So 
this type of wheel, the weight is very comparable to, let's say, an aluminum wheel like that right there. So, um, you know, it's not always going to be that much lighter to go with a carbon wheel. Aesthetically, sure, it looks more pro and your bike looks probably a um, little sexier, a little bit racier with something like this on. But you have to choose what's the right reason that you are buying an aerodynamic I'm sorry, a carbon wheel. And so let's talk briefly about something like this. So this is a 58 millimeter rim depth. And as you keep going up every, every category of low profile, mid and deeper section type of wheel, you can venture to say about 100 grams total weight increase between each one of those different levels of rim depth but you're buying the wheel now for pure aerodynamic benefit once you get into a rim depth this 58 millimeters and then more uh, there's 60 plus there's um, 80 millimeter rim depth wheels so once you start getting into that realm of 55 plus 50 plus your your only consideration is all out speed out of that wheel i find these wheels not very practical for anything other than going really fast and you make this aerodynamic wheel with your aerodynamic positioning on the bike obviously your your bike um if you're doing time trialing or triathlons you may want a, a time trial or triathlon bike and you may want a nice deep section wheel like this and deeper you may get like a 80 millimeter wheel for the back and so just kind of imagine that this wheel would be about to there okay and contrary to popular belief when these wheels get deeper and deeper and there's a lot of carbon here an urban myth if if you will is that oh carbon wheels are more comfortable mm, not so much these rims are I'm sorry the spokes are a lot shorter so it makes it a lot stiffer if you have a wheel with nice long spokes and a shallowish type of rim section there's a lot more spoke here to absorb the impact of the road so these wheels are generally more comfortable than something like this where it's a deep section wheel the spokes are shorter. I mean, just take any short thing that you're trying to bend or something longer that you're trying to bend. It, there's a lot more give to a wheel with longer spokes. So remember again, in my opinion anyway, the deeper you start to go above the 50 millimeters, this is, this is pretty much a all-out type, all-out race wheel and the type of wheel that for everyday riding, it's probably too much. It's probably not manageable in crosswinds. It's probably um, heavier than anything else you could have ridden on your bike. But there is always that aerodynamic advantage, right? So, I mean, you have to pick what is most important to you. And again, you can get these wheels much, much deeper than this. And then ultimately, you can have a disc wheel and that's when this goes all the way it there are no spokes it is just one smooth surface here and no spokes because the spokes are churning into that wind and usually you'll find a disc wheel in the rear unless of course you're looking at um, bike races from the 80s and sometimes you'll see them running a disc wheel in the front and a disc wheel in the back. I, I mean, I was watching one of Le Mans, Greg Le Mans, uh, Tour de France wins, I think it was the 86, and they're riding a front disc and a rear disc. I, I can't even fathom trying to control that bike in any type of crosswinds. So, but I, if you are for all out speed, the disc wheel, I mean, it is literally 87% 80, or so, 87% more aerodynamic 
than a 32 spoke wheel, which this is not, but just to give you an example, a low profile 32 spoke wheel was a very common wheel for many, many years. And that rim, or I'm sorry, that disc wheel was designed to be way more aero than that. And that, that was a benchmark, the 32 spoke wheel. So just a quick recap. I think on my own personal level, I like a, a, a shallower rim. So it's a lot more manageable in any wind condition. I like probably no more than about a 40 millimeter wheel. And just to refresh your memory, this was about 35. I've got another one that's 38 hanging around here somewhere. And then um, there's also a, I mean, to me, there's just a benefit that you probably never really thought of. It's much more common if you've gotten a flat <laughs> or someone else has gotten a flat on the side of the road that you will find someone who has a, a, um, a tube with a long enough valve for some, a wheel like this or even a wheel like this, right? So 48 millimeter valve stems will fit and that's typically the most common tube sold in most bike shops and ridden by most people. By the time you get to this type of wheel, if you get a flat on the side of the road and let's say you've pinched the one you've put in or for whatever reason you're out of tubes and you're waiting for someone to ride by and you know, because we always do this, right? We always say, hey, do you need anything? And you yell out, yes. Then they slow down, they pull over and yeah, I need a tube with a 80 millimeter stem on it, <laughs> valve stem on it. And they're like, uh, yeah, no, I don't have that. So if you're riding these deep section wheels, let me give you just a quick tip. You should have some valve extenders either already installed on your tube or at least have these in your tool kit because it'll be, a, depending on where you are, it'll be a struggle to have to find someone who has a long enough valve stem for your deep section wheel. And especially if you're riding anything deeper than, I mean, this is, this is 58 and it's pretty deep, but there are people that ride, you know, 60 plus and 70 type rim depth, especially in the back. So anyway, just something to consider that if you're the guy or girl who's riding these deep section wheels, you have to have your valve extenders or at least find tubes that have an 80 millimeter valve stem. So for example, if I were to um, get one of these guys, you're gonna need at least that type of a valve stem for a wheel this deep. And most people aren't carrying these around. So, um, now this is set up tubeless and that's another situation as well. You need long, long valves for your tubeless setups. But anyway, enough about that. I do appreciate everyone who has subscribed to the channel. We're up to 550 subscribe, 551 I think subscribers. Today's September the 24th and I'm just, I'm really excited that we are building this channel slowly together and I, I want to put out a lot more content to you. So please make a comment below if, <laughs> if you've been out on the road, gotten a flat, and now you don't have a tube with a long enough valve stem to put into your wheels. It's happened to me. It's happened to people on the road when I've come up on them and I'm like, oh no, I've only got a 48 and they've got something deep. So share a story with me. I'd love to hear it. And uh, in the meantime, we will see you up the road.